Soy muy emocionada, really excited because we have um, a lot to talk about. We are launching the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast este sábado, so August 1st, we'll have the first episode. So we just wanted to introduce uh, what we're going to be talking about in season one with everybody and then answer any questions that you have. Um, you may have already noticed that you got a sneak peek of episode one in the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast this week. So in this past Tuesday, we actually featured the first episode of the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast on the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. So we're really excited because we have done several episodes before about Dominican Spanish. However, we felt like we needed to focus more on it because a lot of folks will come to us and say, hey, I want to learn how to speak Spanish from Puerto Rico or from Dominican Republic or from Cuba. And while we touch on it a little bit in the podcast, I really didn't have enough space and time to devote to really explaining, you know, more about Dominican Spanish, how Spanish is spoken there, how it's different from the other islands, even um, not just, you know, Latin American Spanish in general, but also between Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Dominican Republic, there are a lot of differences that people don't always know about. So uh, Kesia and I have been working on this project, and we're so excited to finally share with you season one of the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. And we also have some giveaways. So uh, we'll get to that in a minute because we will be giving away some, some neat prizes for everyone, um, especially anyone who's joining us here live. If you have a question, um, definitely let us know. We will be answering questions as well. Uh, so yeah, make sure that if you have a question for me or Kesia, anything about Spanish doesn't just have to be Dominican Spanish. We're here for you uh, to answer your questions. So Kesia, cuéntanos un poquito de, de ti y de dónde eres exactamente en, en la isla. Uh, mm -hmm. Y sí, puedes presentarte. Sí, um, yo vivo, bueno, yo soy del norte de la isla. Como decimos aquí, we say el Cibao. We say it's el Cibao, it's the north area of the island. Um, I live like, probably an hour away from the beach, um, and it's surrounded by mountains, so it's like a valley. It's, the weather is very nice. It's the second biggest city in the country. Um, people are very friendly. Cibaeños are like very welcoming and friendly. So it's a really cool place to visit. <laughs> really cool. Yes, and I have um, visited before, although right now it's kind of tough to travel, right? We're all going through a difficult time right now, but I'm sure it's um, a lot nicer at least. You get to see the beach and at least be in nicer, <laughs> nicer weather. <laughs> yeah. So for Dominican Spanish 101, well, actually, first, before we get to that, I want to also let everyone know that um, you're also a Spanish teacher. So Kesia speaks English and Spanish. She also does a sign language as well. Uh, and she is available for private lessons. So if anyone is thinking after this, like I listened to the podcast this week and I really want to learn more, or you just want a chance to practice conversation, um, Kessie is available as well, and I'll put in the comments here, you know, how you can book a lesson if you want to talk to her one-on-one -on -one as well, because she is very, very friendly, so no need to be intimidated. I know some people go, oh, I never have anyone to practice Spanish with, and they're just afraid they're going to freeze and not know what to say, but Kessie is very friendly. She makes it very nice, and she's very patient. Ella tiene paciencia. Es muy, muy importante, ¿no? <laughs> So even if you're a beginner or you just need to brush up on your skills or you got questions about Dominican Spanish, uh, you can also um, book a lesson one-on-one -on -one with Kessia to, to learn more and to actually practice your Espanol, okay? So Kessia, I want to talk a little bit about season one of the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. So the episode this week, we talked about greetings in the Dominican Republic. And we talked a little bit about how, you know, we're taught the standard greeting of like, hola, como estas, y, you know, it's that kind of thing. And we talked about how in DR, that's not really how people tend to talk day to day, especially among friends and family. So if you could share with us one or two like common greetings that uh, you might hear in the Dominican Republic that you won't hear anywhere else. Que lo que. <laughs> uh, the infamous. <laughs> yeah, like you said, we, we don't say that. Uh, hola, como esta usted? Buenos días. You know, it's very formal. If you're talking to a friend or you just see somebody on the street, they're like, hello, que, como tu ta? That's very common, which is actually, como tu estas? How are you? But we just make it short. You know, it sounds like our own language. But yeah, I would say, que lo que, and como tu ta? Those are like the common ones here. 
Okay, okay. Yeah, and that's that's one of my favorite ones. And I think that's definitely a giveaway. If you're talking to someone or you just hear people talking, they're like, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> you know they're probably from Dominican Republic. <laughs> if you're not on the island and you hear people talking like that, because there's a lot of um there's a lot of communities here in the United States and the where there are large groups of um uh, of people from Dominican Republic and we all know about the infamous Dominican salon. So here it's like, <laughs> when anyone talks about Dominican Republic, it's like they think, oh, you go to the Dominican to get your hair done, <laughs> right? That's the one thing people think about, or they may think about like a restaurant, but there are communities where people speak Spanish and there's also, you know, there's a mix here. There's people from all over Latin America, but there's definitely a large Dominican population, especially in like Washington Heights, New York, Central Florida. So even if you can't travel right now, and you're just learning Spanish and you're in your neighborhood, there's so many people that you can still uh, have a chance to speak to and you'll hear some of these uh, terms as well. Someone said that to me in English, like, oh, you're skinny, like, or, you know, you're too skinny or like, you know, you, you need to eat a steak or like, uh, you know, this is fat boy. Like, we're like, oh, you can't call me fat, right? But like, it's not really, like if someone says, you know, flaquita, it's like, oh, you're just slender. It doesn't mean like they're saying anything bad and people are just kind of accepting it's like a description it's not seems negative or, or anything like that or teasing so so i think in general i think kessia you were telling me as we were as we were talking throughout the season that you know you really just have to relax right like that's like the 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 main principle of like not only not just the, you know speaking spanish in dominican republic but just kind of the culture like you just gotta relax right you gotta chill out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yes, and that's when you're going to enjoy the country and the people. Because if you come with that strict mind mindset, then you're going to feel offended by everything or everyone. So just, you know, relax, like you said, and you'll enjoy the country. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, um, uh, hold on one second, see if we have any more questions here. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's interesting, like I said, I think that just coming from a perspective of being from the U.S., that we just tend to be so much more uptight about, we get really caught up, and we also get caught up in, like, I want to speak Spanish perfect, right, and we're not really, you know, relaxed with how we speak, and, and when you're speaking Spanish in the Dominican Republic also, like, if you come, you know, someone says, que lo que, and you're like, uh, you know, estoy bien, gracias, you know, usted, and all this kind of formal stuff, you're going to sound really unnatural, right? And then also just the way you speak in general, like some of the words, like if, you, if you're sort of like, I don't know, you're talking like really stuffy or almost with like a European accent, like it just doesn't sound right, right? Like, like, like if when someone says, ah, que lo que, and you're like, um, and even if you try to say like, tranquilo, tranquila, and you're like, tranquilo, tranquila, like it's not... <laughs> <laughs> that sound right. So yes, I think overall you just have to relax, right? Tranquilo, tranquila. <laughs> so, so all right. So Cassia, thank you so much. I want to um, I will see if we have any more questions. We'll sort of stick around for a few more minutes, but I do want to let folks know again that if you want to uh, subscribe to the Dominican Spanish One Hundred One podcast, so that you can hear all about what we have to offer in season one. We're going over so many different expressions and, you know, we're talking about food, we're talking about party, we're talking about expressions used with friends. And we're really just giving you an overview of how to just not only hear and understand Spanish in the Dominican Republic, but also just to be able to use some of these phrases yourself and know how to respond appropriately. So we're gonna give you a lot of advice into that. So make sure you subscribe to the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. So wherever you subscribe to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast, make sure you search for Dominican Spanish 101, hit that subscribe button. Now, Cassia, do you, do you find that people usually don't realize like how many words are different? They think it's just like, oh, you just learned que lo que and like coño, like you're fine, right? But there's a lot of words, right? From that, that aren't used anywhere else. Yeah, no, now that you said 200, I was like, wow, <laughs> we do have that many. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure we don't have all of them. I mean, you know, I think the interesting thing about language is that it's always changing and evolving. Language is a living thing, right? So people are always using expressions, they're coming up with new ways of saying things, um, especially as like popular culture and music, like new generations come up, there's always new words, there's always new words. So we're always even discovering and adding on to what we have available. 
which is another reason why we're offering the podcast. So there's things if we missed it in the book that we're able to supplement that with the podcast and get you more like up-to-date information. So this is just the beginning. We hope that you all enjoy season one and then that we'll be able to launch season two very soon. And we hope that you all um, enjoy learning about Dominican Spanish and also learning about the culture in Dominican Republic. Cause it's not just about, you know, knowing the right words but it's also about just learning more about the people and the culture. And from my perspective, most importantly, La Musica, because it's like some of the best music yeah. on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any specific questions that you want asked, more in-depth questions, or you just want to practice conversation, um, Kessia is available for private lessons. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session with her. You can ask questions. You can just practice conversation. As I mentioned earlier, she's super friendly, nice, patient. So don't feel intimidated. Like, oh my gosh, I have to speak Spanish. You know, some of us get that deer in headlights. Like, oh my God, I've been studying. You know, like we're, we're on like our phone. We're like, yeah, I learned some Spanish today, but we haven't had a conversation. Right? <laughs> So this is an opportunity to be able to do that, not just for Dominican Spanish, but just in Spanish in general. And I always tell people, Kessie, like if you can understand Spanish in the Caribbean, especially Dominican Republic, you can understand any other dialect of Spanish. Because <laughs> 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 it will be a lot slower usually. So if you can get used to this one, you'll be able to travel anywhere with no problem and understand what people are saying. So definitely make sure you check out the podcast. Make sure you subscribe. I think that's it for us. Kessia, do you have anything you'd like to say to, to kind of close us out? Well, I just hope everyone enjoys um, the podcast. And like you said, if you have any questions, something that they want us to include for season two, I I'm sure they're going to have fun. And yeah, enjoy Dominican Spanish, Dominican music, Dominican food. Everything. <laughs> That's it. You have to learn and enjoy at the same time. You know, it doesn't have to be boring or um, strict or anything like that. <laughs>